Hello everyone, welcome to Travels with my friend from Istanbul again in Turkey. So in our last vlogs from here, we've seen harems, mosques, Roman history and the amazing Spice Bazaar. But this week, we're going to have an amazing journey without actually leaving the hotel. Because this isn't just any hotel. This is the incredible historic Pera Palace Hotel made famous by the recent Netflix smash hit Midnight at the Pera Palace. And with good reason. This hotel is packed with beauty, incredible interiors, history, but also mystery. In particular, if you're an Agatha Christie fan, watch on, as there is something very, very special and very mysterious indeed about this hotel. Let's head to the lobby. Hi everyone, I'm really excited today because we are in the beautiful Pera Palace Hotel in Istanbul and I'm here with Burish who's going to show us around and tell us about its many mysteries yeah, we'll and secrets. We'll. Yeah. Excellent. So do come through and see the lounge. It is so beautiful. Oliver and I have loved being here. It's spectacular and the ceiling. Yes, the ceiling is really impressive. And as Boris tells us with good reason, the hotel was built ready for 1895 to host passengers from the luxury long distance train, the Orient Express. Orient Express train was based from France. Yes. Uh, in this period, they wanted to show them this high society people, Oriental Istanbul, yes. but they realized that there is no place to accommodate these important people. Okay, so they had yes. all of these VIPs arriving on the Orient yeah. Express and nowhere for them they to stay. They were drinking champagne, but there's no place to welcome them with, with the champagne. That's why they decided to build an hotel here. In this period, in the latest, in the 1890s, yes. uh, SM Brothers started to make a hotel here. And it was a really nice hotel. That's why they decided to make a partner with them. Then 1895, we welcomed first Orient Express train visitors. 1895. 1895. And nearly 130 years later, this hotel is still the height of luxury. More than that, it's got this incredible character. This is the Kubeli or Domed Lounge. Isn't it amazing? These kubes you used to see in the mosques, but this is not a mosque kubes. These are air conditioned systems. They're opening like a flower. The no. air there directly goes up because up to, uh, ceiling was open wide when they built the hotel. Ah, oh, so it's, a, it's effectively a courtyard yeah. and we're inside yeah, the because courtyard. Because it's a neoclassic French palace. This is library room. I love this room so much. Uh, when they <gasps> built the hotel, everywhere was full of library. Yes. People were just reading and listening piano. That was like this. And, well, there was no Netflix back then. No, <laughs> they have some stuff over there. They all belongs to the museum. Actually, they're from the 18th furniture. century. Yeah, it's come oh, it's from the Sultan's Palace. Really? From the Sultan's yeah, Palace? Yeah. We call Sedef, I don't know the name of in English, but Oh, the inlaid it's, mother of pearl. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> it's mother of pearl. spectacular. Yeah. And small one on the other side. Yes, and these are all signed copies of yeah. various masterpieces and all of the Agatha Christie's. Wonderful. We have an Orient bar on the left. Ah, we know the bar. We've discovered the you bar, did, haven't yeah. we, Oliver? In this period, we welcome many uh, different clients, important clients. Uh, from 1980 to 1935. Uh, one of them is uh, Prince Edward. Really? Uh, he came here? He came here and Mr. Tetrick welcomed him in mm. his parapellas. While he was in his room, the, one of his commander knocked the door and said, Sir, I'm sorry, your father's dead and you become a, a British Empire. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that happened in this hotel? Yeah, he came here as a prince and turned back to... He left uh, as a king. But of course, you know the story, he was in he, love. He didn't and, stay yeah, king very long. he didn't stay very long. That's why uh, we have uh, 401 uh, named King Edward Suite. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 
That is uh, absolutely history, extraordinary, huh? the amount of history everywhere. Yeah. As Baresh tells us, there are many, many famous people associated with this grand hotel, but perhaps two stand out most of all. One is Agatha Christie, the best-selling fiction writer of all time. Her novels having sold more than two billion copies. And we shall hear more about her story here shortly. And the other is the great Ataturk, who stayed here many times between 1917 and 36 and took many of his most significant decisions here. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk was a great statesman of international standing. He was the founding father of the Turkish Republic and famous for his progressive reforms which brought Turkey firmly into the 20th century as a significant modern independent power. Turkey had previously been run by the Ottoman sultans, but towards the end of the First World War, their power had collapsed. The victorious allied powers, including Britain, were actually planning on partitioning Turkey among themselves, and places like the Pera Palace would have been full of their commanding officers. But Ataturk had different plans. He stood up to the allies with his Turkish national movement, and eventually he defeated the forces sent by the allies and created an independent Turkey, serving as its first president from 1923 until his death in 1938. And as Boris explains, a hugely symbolic moment of Turkish independence took place in 1917 in this very bar. Atatürk was sitting there and the commander, uh, British commander was sitting there and this commander wondered who is this guy and asked the waiter, who, who is this guy? Yes. They said that it's Atatürk, it's uh, one of our commander, important commander. They said we heard his name, please tell him to join us and yes. we would like to welcome him in our own table. And, he says, thank you, but there are guests in our country, they will leave soon. Tell him to come and join us to our own table. That was very important because so after symbolic. first steps taken to become a in Republican. This very room. Yeah. Do you know which table it was? Do you know where? Of course, the table should be different than this, yes. but he sit this area and the British commander was over there. History happened here. Now in the Netflix show, if you've seen it in episode one, that scene is set in the ballroom. In fact, it happened here in the bar, but we're still going to see the ballroom. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <gasps> what a room! You like it? I love it. <laughs> and this oh, is a Grand Pera ballroom. Yes. It's important because in the century there was no ballroom culture. Yes. People was welcoming all their friends of her or him in their own house or in our garden. So this is the first the proper trainers. ballroom yeah. in Istanbul. Correct. They did some parties, they had dinners, Turkish Republic balls organized here, first beauty contests uh, really? it happened here, yeah, and many different events actually. Russian uh, played a sky skating, there was ice behind. No, Yeah. they, they made this into an ice skating because ring. Because during the Bolshevik revolution, many yes. uh, rich Russian families tried to escape from Russia to the European cities, yes. but there was transportation difficulties to go directly to mm. European cities. They, that's why they come here for about five or top 6,000 Russian uh, yes. stayed here in Parasite. We're gonna see the Pasha room. Oh uh, gosh, oh, I hadn't seen this room. No. In 18th century, this room was only allowed for the, uh, the general consul's wife to have some yes. tea. Turkish people wasn't allowed in this place. Oh my goodness, yeah, so it was were, segregated, just the British? Just, just, just the British and just the foreigners. Yes. Uh, but after World War uh, First and World War Second, we just uh, allowed here only Pashas and the Turkish commanders was allowed in this area. Yes. And they were playing gamble. Ah, so again, it was just yeah, exclusive use for a small number of people. That's why these stuff are belongs to the museum from 18th century. Furniture. Look at this chair. I love these. <laughs> 18th century French chair. Ah, is it French? Yes, yes. Very French style. <laughs> I think we won't be seeing any more stuff here. <laughs> I know, I found my spot now. <laughs> I'm going to show you the, our beauty. <gasps> the lift. The lift. The first electric lift after Eiffel Tower. It's the only one in Turkey, in yes. Ottoman Empire, but 
second in all around the world. Uh, really? The Eiffel Tower had the first the electric lift? Tower. And then this one? Yeah, and then this Amazing. one. Amazing. It's all in use, actually, but uh, after the pandemic, the government decided to stop the elevator, which is oh. built before 1950s yes. because of security reasons. That's yes. why uh, we're still talking to government to be able to use this elevator. Yes, because how wonderful to be able when to use it. Our clients check in, we were taking them into their room like this. If you, if oh, you want to see it. Oh, I would love to go inside, yes. You can. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. This is so I'm so here, excited to be able to be in here. Oh, hello, Oliver. <laughs> Are you enjoying so, this? I feel like I've gone back in time. It's my kind of period, you know, <laughs> I'm liking this. It's a time machine. Yeah, funnily enough, Ollie, you're calling it a time machine, but that's actually what happens in the Netflix series, not in the elevator, but there's time travel within the hotel, but I don't want to spoil it, so you'll have to watch it I for yourselves. I definitely will be. It's on the plane while viewing this, <laughs> that's for sure. This is built by the Schindler brothers. There was always someone in front of the elevator to welcome the clients. Yes. The reason why, because the elevator wasn't controlling with the floors. It was just controlling inside the elevator. That's why someone should drive it. Oh, someone had to need... stop it exactly. At Correct. The right if you go a uh, second yeah. floor, someone should take it uh, wow. and control inside the elevator. That's why there was always someone having a hat. That was like a house welcoming his house. That's why they have a seat here and it's quite larger than our regular elevators. Hotel is a sixth floor. We have 115 rooms. Let me tell you about the owners. Yes. There's some pictures about the owners. Mr. Bodasakis, is, he was an owner of the hotel is from 1918 to 1922. He came to hotel because he was dealing with some trade in the city. His clothes was quite dirty. He come to hotel and asked for a room, but the, way, uh, the receptionist thinks that he's a poor guy and they didn't give a room. They say, I'm, we are sorry, hotel is fully booked, we cannot give yes. you a room. But he, he, he understood the situation. He say, look, okay, I understand my clothes are dirty because I'm traveling in the city, but I'm a rich guy, I'll give you the money, yes. uh, don't worry. They say, no, we are sorry, we can't give you a room, hotel is fully booked. He says, okay, understand the situation, I'll come tomorrow, I'll buy the hotel, and I'll fire both of you. <laughs> he did what they say. Oh, no way. Yeah, that's why he's our second owner. He got the hotel from um, uh, Orient Express. Because yes. during, during the war situation, hotel was very bad condition. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. After they closed the hotel, because in the World War II, uh, he left from the city, and we have third owner on the left. Mr. Misbah Muayesh from Lebanon based Ottoman citizens. He was a friend of Ataturk, head of Turks. In a story, he is a very good friend of Agatha Christie as well. Oh, he, really? He, he, he welcomed all uh, important clients until uh, 1974. 1974? He passed away, yeah. He built another house for him by Italian architect Alexander Valery. He has a house in front of the Bosphorus. But I'll, I'm gonna tell you uh, like a Christian story. There is some uh, connecting. Oh, a link between it's, them. Yeah, hmm. yeah. This is our fourth owner, Mr. Hassan Suzer. Uh, he has a connection with Warner Bros. and Agatha Christie. I'm gonna e explain you in the fourth floor. Okay. Okay. We will see the Ataturk's room right now. Every day and uh, two times we are opening this uh, room for all from 11 to 12 to 3 to 4 o'clock. So this is a museum, this, this room. no a, one can stay this, here? This be, no, Ataturk stayed here from 1970 to 1927 uh, several times. Actually, he stayed different rooms by the name of Kemal Bey, Mr. Kemal. Yes, uh, before he became Ataturk. Yeah. Uh, he stayed here because hot water only goes to first floor and the second floor. Oh my goodness. So yeah. the further floors can't no, have been as popular. Was, no, yeah, all of them, first and second floor, is very popular yes. uh, compared with the other floors. Yes. The servants and the rest of the clients were mm. uh, staying because it was a really big comfort to have hot water. <laughs> Still because is. Every floor we have a telephones. Yes. Uh, every floor. One toilet each floor. Not. Mm. A toilet in each room. Yes. And they were calling the uh, room service to have some hot water, like a cowboy style. They were yeah, boiling they the hot water. Yeah, that was they like. But this room had the hot water. All the stuff is belongs to Ataturk. There's some glasses, hats, pajamas. But 
to be a mystery. These two carpets given by the Indian Mihraje, the Prince of oh. India, while he visited to Ataturk, you know, yes. these two important clients, while they're visiting each other, they were mm. always giving some yes. gifts. This is one of them. Eleven years later, Ataturk passed away. It was in the storage. The historians take these carpets and try to understand what it means. Yes. And they see there's a time. A clock, yes. It's a clock and it shows nine past seven. Ataturk, that is nine past five. But brain date, two minutes later, two past seven. No. Yeah. Oh, that gives me goosebumps, the exact moment that he died. And also, Ataturk is dead in November, November 10th. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Ten candles, but they are not lighting. This shows us 10th of November is a bad news comes behind. And also, these are uh, flowers. It's just born in November. We say Kasimpatu. Really? They only flower in November? Yeah. And also, there is a bird, but they're not flying. But still, uh, yeah. yes. And also, elephants, their things is looking down. Hmm. This shows us bad news comes behind. It means Ataturk, that is uh, on November 10th. Seven minutes Correct. past nine. That's why it's very interesting for us. Honestly, I have goosebumps. That's really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and another one on the left. Now the birds are flying. Yes. And all Kasim Pati flower is our full. There is yes, no missing part. Yes, complete. And the chandeliers is giving light right now. Yes. And the birds are, looks happy. Yes. And the, the cat. The cat means the second life after that, oh. as they say. That's why this means, as the historian says, he passed away, but he will live soon ever. Yes, so he's moved on to the yeah. next life. That is fascinating. These are so far where, while Ataturk welcomes friends of him, they were sitting there. And the yes. color in 18th and 19th century, this was the famous color. The pink, shine pink, and this one oh. means, uh, yeah, it was the favorite colors of this century. Oh. You might see in your own country, maybe in France, yes. castles and stuff. Yes, different some. fashions, yeah. different periods. Yeah. yeah. So this was the fashion of the time. His clothes, we are showing our clients, you never know if it is more than 100 years old. No, it's in perfect condition. And there is a picture, he wear this uniform. This is his, yeah. him wearing this outfit with the hat yeah. as well. He's looking extremely <laughs> elegant. <laughs> That's your sort of outfit, Oliver. I think so, yeah. Yeah, you'd love that. Yeah, wow. Well, he looked after his clothes. Very he was, he was drawing his shape. own clothes. Oh, designing. Styling, designing. He designed yeah, his own clothes. Yeah, he designed clothes. own clothes. Gosh, he's gone up in my aspiration even more. My goodness. <laughs> I mean, some people are just capable of doing everything, yeah, aren't they? Literally, do yeah. Doing your own clothes. Yeah. Start a new republic, <laughs> uh, but don't forget to design your clothes whilst you're at it. That's amazing. <laughs> this is, as you see, it's a bedroom of him. Everything is from 19... 17. There are some pictures belongs to him and some documents. Before he passed away, a week before, he was trying to still develop the Turkish language. Just Turkey. a week before his death? Just imagine that he, he was in very pain and difficult time for him, but he was still trying to develop the Turkish language. Um, he was a great guy. And there is a, a letter of Greek Prime Minister Venizelos nominating him to Ataturk as a Nobel a peace prize in 1934. Absolutely it's amazing. Right, Imagine that there are a biggest enemy, but they were it's they, extraordinary. They were a very great guy, all of them. Time, Time magazine. It's a number eight. Number eight. Yeah, number eight. <laughs> he become early. two eyes, but this is the first one. Only the eighth ever issue of Time okay. magazine. Yeah. Mustafa Kemal Pasha. He read more than three thousand books during the. Uh, war conditions. That's why he was talking the Fr French, English, and Turkish together. He was always trying to himself during yes. the war conditions. That's why it's it's very important for us. So whilst fighting a war, he was also designing his clothes and writing three thousand, yeah. uh, reading language, three thousand books. Had to design everything. everything. Designing language and speaking three languages. My work ethic. Look a bit. <laughs> Did he ever sleep? Uh, he was. He died very young. Mm, he did too much. Yeah, maybe. But how amazing. <laughs> Thank goodness for people like that in this world.
That bathroom is so cool. Isn't it beautiful? That seriously looks like we've gone back in time. It's absolutely amazing. I'd like to find out more about it. Yes, it's fascinating. How easy, isn't it? It's Five centimeters. very easy. <laughs> I, I am. You can just imagine the train, can't you? <laughs> yeah, so they designed just the ladies' restaurant, the long restaurant. <laughs> this is our floor, Ollie. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? This is our fourth floor. When they built the hotel, the ceiling was open wide. And this coupe yeah. base, taking the daylight through the coupe lounge. Wonderful. So it just flooded all yeah, the way down. Yeah, it's a light tubes taking the daylight five times bigger through the downstairs. Oh, they reflect the yeah, light. Yeah. That's so clever. And is this the same principle that you have in the Ottoman palaces, like the Topkapi Palace, where they have these domes? with the elephant eyes, they call Might them. Might be, but uh, this was only one used for the air conditioning system. The other rest of the mosque, it was just for decoration. But this is air this con, is, this is a this modern is, version. Yeah, this is the modern version. Cutting edge. I'm gonna show you some, some things uh, from 12 years before. They were trying to paint a wall. Yes. On the wall, there was a big wardrobe like this. Yes. They get left and realize that there is a small door, but it's locked. There's a door behind the wardrobe. More. Yeah, it was yeah. a secret. They opened and they found some cutleries. How extraordinary. 3,500 cutleries. That's quite a lot of cutlery. They were very well-known cutleries They're by French. Christophel. I know them very well. Christophel, it's, Christophel. it's one of the main French uh, makes. It's such a lovely design, it's an Art Nouveau design with yeah. bamboo, the sort of Japonisme coming in. Actually, I'm not sure it's bamboo. I think it's, uh, what do you call, bulrushes. I think it's bulrushes. Yeah, and also they were ordered by 1887 yes. and to 1930s. They directly communicate with the owner of Christoffel. Of course, the father's yes. dad, the younger generation was in, on the control. They said, uh, yeah, we know these orders. If you give us back uh, with 3,500 Christoffel, I'll, we will give you 15,000 Christoffel to you because the, the value is uh, like a museum. Of course, they, because had yeah. they even been used? Uh, we're still keeping them. We don't use it because yes. they all are uh, real uh, silvers. We, we didn't find all the crystals. We have, we found some the machine. Oh, uh, so absolutely huge servers yeah, as well yeah, yeah. with the big cloches Maybe on top. Maybe you might see it in breakfast area. Yes. There's some, it's a crystal yes. as well. Oh, I get, so you found real treasure in the hotel. Yeah, it's... Uh, we are keeping them, 3,500 Christophels, in our uh, backstage. We are showing some of them to our clients. Now we're coming on to the Agatha Christie mystery of the Pera Palace Hotel. Yeah, Agatha, you know, she passed away in 1974. After she passed away, Warner Bros. Company decided to make a movie about her life uh, because she is the very well-known uh, crime novel writer all around the world. Everybody was wondering her life. Mm. And they were uh, start to talk their family members, parents, friends of her, etc., to get some details about her. Once Agatha's car crashed in the car close to the lake, they thought that uh, uh, she dead. She didn't turn back 11 yes. days. She, yes, nobody the, the knows. mystery of the 11 missing 11 days. 11 missing days. But nobody knows. Agatha turned back 11 days later. Actually, they found him in a hotel. She turned back and she, she says, I don't remember anything about my last 11 days. Warner Bros. decided to understand what happened in the last 11 days. They called Tamara Rand. She was very popular in this period. She had some project in BBC News Channel. She was a sidekick. Uh, yeah. yeah. My goodness. She was talking to Supritz, that Supritz, mm. a medium. Mm. Um, they discussed with, with her to understand 11 days about Agatha's missing. Uh, they had the science sense with, with him and she asked Agatha, where were you? Uh, she says, I was in Istanbul. 
Okay, what did you do in Istanbul? I stayed in Parapolis Hotel. Okay, what's the secret behind? My secret is in one of the rooms in Parapolis Hotel. And the Warner Bros. Company decided to call the owner of the hotel. It was, the time was 1979, five years How later. How exciting. The owner was Hasan Suzer, the latest yes. owner. Uh, mm -hmm. They said, look, we have something to discuss with you. We want to come there and uh, see uh, one of the important room. Mm -hmm. Can you show us? Uh, he said, OK, come. They come here, but Tamara didn't. While they come to hotel, Tamara was on the other line. He was yes. giving directive, turn left, turn right, <laughs> open the door, something like that. I would have that. loved to have been in the room at the time. Um, and they come inside the room, open the door, under the shelf, behind that they found the key, this one. So that is... Black one, it's about uh, seven or six centimeters. Yes. Um, actually, this is another real one. We're keeping yeah. the real this one. This is a in replica. Our, yeah, this is a replica. The, <laughs> uh, it, the real one in is in somewhere safe. Box. safe. Yeah. Uh, of course, when, when they found this key, they were very excited. Or mainly Agatha and Warner Bros. Company. They thought that it should open somewhere about the secret of Agatha Christian life. Yes. And they tried to discuss with the owner, said that, look, we found the key, but we need to make second sessions to understand this mystery. But it, there was a big benefit behind. Uh, he says, okay, if you want to do it, I have some uh, offer for you, uh, some money, some renovation, etc. They say, we need to turn back to our country and we'll let you know about this uh, offer which is too high for us. And after a while later, Tamara wrote a letter to Mr. Suzar, say, um, Mr. Suzar, you ask too much, be reasonable and give a reasonable offer to yes. them. And I need to make second sessions. Otherwise, this key is nothing yeah. without my second sessions. After a few weeks later, he accepted this offer, but she passed away. Someone killed, killed her. Uh, and in 1980s, Turkish was in a bad condition. Uh, the, the Turkish commanders uh, took the control from the democratic regime, actually, and hotel closed for a while. And we never took this movie by Warner Bros. It's just a key. We're keeping it like this. Uh, but historians and some people say that this key opens somewhere else in Bosphorus which is built by Alexander Wallery, the house of Misbah Moayesh. Wow. So the so, secret of Agatha Christie's 11 days could be in a mansion in the Bosphorus. Yes. So some people believe that this key might open one of the rooms in the home of the owner of the hotel. Yeah. And that there was a link between Agatha Correct. Christie and the owner of the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Because she come here several times and she wrote his book a murder for rent express here in this hotel. That's so she why... kept coming back to the Para Palace, yeah. that we know. Whether she came on the missing 11 days or yeah. not, we don't know, maybe. And who killed Tamara? As they say, one of the mafia leader killed him. I, I believe so, he made another session for him, but he wasn't very happy with it. Oh. It, it might be reason, but we never know what happened. So there's a mystery of a Tamara's death as well. Just as they're about to make a breakthrough finally, Tamara was killed, it's believed, by a mafia leader. I mean, this story, you could not make up this story, yeah. could you? It is impossible. <laughs> it's like another novel. <laughs> so there's still a lot of work to do to yeah. find the mystery yeah. of the key. Yeah. And people can still stay in Agatha Christie's room, is that correct? Yeah, it's not a museum, but of course, we decorated the room as Agatha's favorite color. It's a crime novel writer, black and red, mm. and it's some, a time machine and some books publishing in the room. Uh, its number is 411. Uh, and, and we're just next to it. Do you want to see yeah. the door of 411? Uh, yeah. We can show you the door. Yeah.